a new grind. I got a question for you. Are you living life or is life living you? How bad do you want to be successful? Are you ready to level up in life? Are you ready to go to that next level? Are you sick of being average? I ask you again, are you living life or is life living you? Less than unstoppable, the international world tour. Dr. Billy Osbrooks, coming to a city near you. I'll be teaching a four hour, life changing seminar on the art of greatness. Arise champion. Every city will sell out. Get your tickets now. This year we're taking this thing global. 27 cities, Toronto, London, Paris, Rome. We're coming to impact one billion people. If you are serious about success, be at one of these events. Get your tickets now at blessedunstoppable.com. If you study the lives of all the greats, one thing you'll find in common that they all had was a dream. See, they all had a vision for how they wanted their life to look. And every day they got up and aligned their actions with that dream, with that vision, until what was only a thought, a vision in their mind became their reality. The whole world is just one big blank white canvas. And you are the artist. Your thoughts are the colors. Your action, your grind, is the paintbrush. Now get up every single day and paint the life that you want to experience, the life that you want to live. Now you heard me on the last message talking about getting clear on what you want in life. Now for me, I'm filtering every decision I make this year through three things. That is fire, truth, and music. Now what I mean by this, fire. Okay, fire is passion. It's what makes me feel the most alive in life. Now hear me out. People with small dreams are lukewarm people. They're not very excited about life. So I'm going to dream big. Everything I do, I'm pushing the envelope. I'm allowing and inviting God into my situation. Because some of you see, when you got small dreams, you're boxing God out. Faith is an invitation for God to come invade your life. So I'm going to dream big where I've got to put myself in a position of faith. Stop dreaming dreams that are equal to your own ability and start dreaming dreams that are equivalent to the God that you serve. The day you start believing is the day you start living. Faith is the match that will set you on fire. Now when I say fire, I'm talking about I'm on fire in everything. I want relationships that are deeply connected and make me feel alive. I want to do work every single day that I'm excited about. Excited to open my eyes in the morning and hate to close them at night because I'm scared I might miss out on something. I'm very keen to my inner energy. And if what I'm about to do doesn't excite me on the inside, I don't do it. Now let me clear that up. Some things in life, the process of building a dream is not going to be fun, right? If I want a championship body, I'm gonna have to work that body out. And some of that ain't gonna be fun, but see, what I'm working towards, that champion body excites me. If you wanna be successful in life, you have to set yourself on fire. If you set yourself on fire, the world will come see you burn. If you're working a job right now that does not set you on fire, your number one objective in life should be to get out of that job and move toward the things that make you feel alive on the inside. That's it. Success chases those on fire. The second thing I'm filtering everything through this year is truth. First, God's truth, his word, his time-tested word, laws and principles that govern success. Anything I'm doing, I'm seeking the word first before I do it. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. I seek the word first and then I seek the word that's on the inside of me. I live through authenticity. Anything not rooted in truth is temporary. 
There is no long-term success outside of one's truth. To step fully into greatness, one must become self-aware of the maker who made him and the person that he made him to be. And when you live from that space, from that thinking, from that mental arena, you become blessed and unstoppable. Only, only when you are in truth can you fully be bold and pursue your dreams with the aggressiveness required to make it a reality. If you don't know who you are, how you expect the world to know who you are? The greats don't become great until they have full revelation of who they are. Martin Luther King knew who he was. Jesse Owens knew who he was. Joe Namath, Broadway Joe, knew who he was. Muhammad Ali knew who he was. Michael Jordan, Alexander the Great, Leonardo da Vinci, Beethoven, Napoleon, Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, Elon Musk, all of them knew who they were. Greatness derives out of self-awareness. The third thing that I'm filtering everything through is music. And when I say music, I don't mean just physical music. Everything in this world is a vibration. Creativity is what I'm talking about here, an expression from the inside. Whether it be writing poems, writing songs, writing books, acting, dancing, painting, drawing, business, yes, even business is music. Relationships is music. Your relationship with God, your spiritual walk, your health, that is music. You are the Beethoven, the composer, the orchestrator of your life. Now I ask you, maestro, what do you want the soundtrack of your life to sound like? Now let me show you how to marry these three together. You gotta set yourself on fire with the things that you love to do. And then you wrap those things in God's truth. Then wrap them in your own authenticity. The realness is on the inside of you. And then you get up every day and express yourself. The average person lives linear. Nine to five timeline doing something they were never designed to do. The greats live vertical. They go deep down inside, find their own truth, find the truth that God put in them. They look up and give him praise and they rise. I'm going to lay out 10 steps here for you to help you make that dream, that vision you have on the inside of you. How to take that and make it a reality. The first step is to seek God first in everything you do. I had a guy approach me one time when I was speaking and he said, I listen to every message and been to a bunch of your live events and every time you speak, you say, seek God first. I hear that over and over and over. And the way he said it, it was like he was disappointed. So I told him this story. There was this small church out in the country and this pastor had been leading it for 40 years. Now he retired and they brought in this new pastor and he had a different kind of anointing on his life. When he spoke, he spoke with power. He came in there the first week and gave it an amazing sermon that lit the whole crowd, the congregation, on fire. Then the second week, he came back to that same congregation and did the exact same sermon, the exact same wording. Then the third week, he came back again and repeated the same sermon that he gave the first week. And when the congregation had left, one of the bishops, one of the elders, pulled the pastor to the side and said, Pastor, I don't know if you know it or not, but some of the brothers and sisters here and some of the choir members have voiced their concerns over your messaging, saying that you have preached the same sermon three weeks in a row. They are questioning our hiring of you, wondering whether you are the right one to lead this congregation. Now this pastor had been assigned to this specific church by Almighty God. He was rooted in fire, in faith, and was unrattled by the question of this bishop. He opened his mouth and said, I am not here to give the congregation what they want. I have been assigned to give them what they need. And what they need is to hear that message over and over and over again until it takes root down in their spirit. We must do more than just read, hear, and breathe the word. We must be comments. We must walk it out. And when I see this congregation begin to walk it out, I will move on to the next message, but not until then. Now all of you out there listening, I want you to remember this. It's not how much of these videos that you listen to. It's how much of the information on these videos that you take and apply to your life. Now the foundation of our success starts 
in our alone time with God because every time we get alone with God we give birth to something if we buy a product and it malfunction or it's not working properly the thing we do is call the manufacturer see the manufacturer of the product knows what the product was designed to do and what it is supposed to do and how it's supposed to do it it's the same with us in life if we have a problem, a challenge, a trial, a tribulation, we go to the manufacturer, our creator, God, the one who made us. See God first in everything. I was asked to speak at this big church. And before the lesson started, I heard people talking about the powerful message that was given on Sunday. So as I was giving my message to the congregation, I said, could somebody please tell me what Sunday's message was about? Now this is a well attended church, so on the night I was speaking there, it was wall to wall in there. But see, the thing was, only one third of the hands went up. So I called on one of the members, I said, please tell me what the message was about. So the elder stood up with his Bible in his hand and proudly gave me a summary of Sunday's message. So I asked the audience a second question, I said, could somebody please tell me one thing you're gonna do this week to apply that message? Then in this massive church that was packed out wall to wall, a mysterious thing happened. All the hands went down. It was like you could hear a needle drop in that place. They knew every horse and every horn that was gonna blow on the last day. They knew every word of the book of Revelation, but did not know one verse that they could apply to everyday life. I asked the congregation, raise your hand if you would like to see your financial situation improve. And every single hand in the congregation went up. So I asked a second question. Can somebody please stand and recite a Bible verse that tells us how to improve our financial situation so that we can become the head and not the tail, above, not below, how we can lend to many nations and not borrow. And all the hands that were up, Again, all of them came down. Now hear me out. I want to clear something up. I am not disrespecting the church I'm talking about here. Because this church is just symbolic of all the churches across the land. This is what's going on. This is why the church looks just like the world. The divorce rate, the same as the world. Bankruptcy is the same as the world. Sickness and disease is the same in the church as it is in the world. This is why we don't see the power. We don't see the miracles. We don't see the breakthroughs that we read about because we are not in relationship with God. We have traded in relationship and the word of God with rituals thinking it's the same thing. It is not. Just because you go to church and sit on a pew on Sunday does not mean that you are a warrior of God. In order to be a warrior for God, you gotta have faith. And you gotta walk that faith out with action rooted in the word. We have traded in being the church for going to church. We have traded in our relationship for religion because it's tangible. The world is in a state of chaos because we as the church out of ignorance Laziness and a lack of faith have turned over our responsibility of changing the world and giving it to politicians, expecting them to do what we have been anointed and assigned to do. It's time for us to stop fooling ourselves and get up out of them pews and get out of these streets and do what we've been called to do. And stop telling the world that hell, fire, and brimstone message and tell them that God loves them. We have to love the lost to bring them back home. Now the second step to making your dream a reality is you gotta capture that dream, that vision, and you gotta capture it down on paper. Write the vision and make it plain so he that read it can run with it. That is biblical. If your dream, if your vision is not written down, you are outside the word of God. You heard on my last message where I talked about the best-selling author, his process for writing his books and how you went about it. And the first thing he did was write the last chapter first this way the rest of his writing was always focused and he always knew where he was going to end up because he had written the ending first. This is the same with your life. Capture the vision, the dream that you want, the outcome, the end result and get that down on paper as clear and precise and accurate as possible. My wife and I wanted to build a new home so we went to sit down with the builder. The first thing the builder asked was what kind of home do you want? How many bedrooms do you want? Bathrooms. What kind of roof do you want? 
Two story, one story, how many square feet are you looking for? What kind of floor do you want? Tile, wood, carpet, what is it? And once we got all these questions out of the way, a couple weeks later, the builder brought us back in and showed us the blueprint for our new home. All the contractors will build our new house, our new home from that blueprint. And it's the same with life. Life will build from the blueprint that you give it in your mind. You need a 4K high resolution, high definition vision in your mind for what you want your life to look like. Then you got to export that mental vision, that dream that you have on the inside. You got to export it from the mental arena and get it down on paper, down to the smallest detail. The first breath of life that you give to a dream is when you put it down on paper. What is it that you want in life? What is it that you want to experience? How do you want to feel every day when you get up? What sets you on fire on the inside? Get that down on paper. Your imagination is the Michelangelo that sculpts the life that you live. Some of you are dreaming too small. Dream bigger because with God, all things are possible. Before you can take possession of something in the physical, you gotta first take up residence of it in the mind. Your mental arena will always produce a life equivalent to it. The great Muhammad Ali, he used to have this gift, this knack for calling out the round that he was gonna defeat his opponent before he ever fought him. And the way he was able to do this was he fought the fight with the opponent in his mind over and over and over again before he ever got in the ring. That's why he knew the outcome before it ever got started. He could feel all the sensations in his body of knocking this opponent out in the fifth round. He could feel TKO and the champion in the sixth round. Whatever it was, he fought it first in his mind. Third step now to making your dreams become a reality is to lay out the top outcomes that you desire to accomplish. There's a hierarchy here. First is, what do I want my legacy to be? What do I want to be remembered for here on earth? See, that's your legacy, that's at the top. Underneath that top is outcomes. What outcomes, if I achieved them, would produce that legacy? What outcomes do you want to accomplish in life? Here's an example. A man says, I want to make the world a better place. Now his outcome might be, I'm gonna build orphanages all across the continent of Africa. Once he knows his outcome, then he sets his goals, and his goals would be raise the funds, the capital, and assemble the team needed to make that dream a reality. One of the biggest mistakes that average people make is they come up with New Year's resolutions. They set goals before they ever figure out the outcome that they want in life. Successful people do the inner homework. That's why they become successful. I don't know how many people have come up to me and told me they have read my book cover to cover. And I say, man, that is awesome. Then I ask them a question. Did you do the self-assessment questions? Did you do the action steps? Did you do the homework that I laid out in there for you? 90% of the time I can tell by the look on their face they did not do the homework. You cannot get changed, you cannot get transformation if you are not willing to put the work in. And see, the work is on the inside. The greats understand that the war, the battle, is won first on the inside. People who don't have a clear vision for their life attempt to compensate for it by filling their day up with meaningless tasks. I see people every day at my seminars and my speaking events and they say, grind city all day, I love your videos. Man, I'm grinding every day, I'm getting up at four o'clock in the morning. And then I pull up to the side and say, okay, tell me what your vision is. What is your plan for your life? What do you want it to look like? And again, I get that silly, dumb, I don't know look on their face. I'm not trying to be hard on you, man. I'm trying to change your life. I'm trying to help you. And in order to help you, you gotta do these things. Not just listen to these videos, you gotta walk them out. Vision is the genesis of all greatness. Once you decide on your legacy, once you wanna leave the earth when you are gone, once you establish the outcomes that will produce that legacy, then we move to number four, which is lay out realistic time-based goals that will allow you to achieve those outcomes. These goals will help keep you in focus every day when you wake up. You will know where you are going, what you are moving towards, and how to get there because you have laid it out step by step on paper. Successful people know exactly what they want in life. Only by knowing precisely where you want to go, 
Can you plan out an effective strategy to get there? You can use the SMART method. See, laying out the SMART way will help you identify the milestones needed to keep you on the trajectory towards success. And when I say SMART, what I mean is Pacific measurable, audacious, relevant, and time-based goals. This is how you set your goals up. Now let's go to the word to confirm what I'm saying. Starting in Luke 14, 28. For which of you intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Less happily, after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. And we'll move on to 31 here. It says, Oh, what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consulteth where he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him or with 20,000? Now let's move on to step five. You got to find a strong why that will motivate you to do what's required to manifest your dream. Nothing can be denied the one that won't be denied. It all starts with how bad do you want it? How bad do you want what you want? People all the time come to me and say, how do I stay motivated? What do I need to do to get motivated? I said, you don't have a motivation problem. What you have is a why problem. Once you figure out a strong enough why to do what it is you want to do, the actions will follow. You don't need something external to motivate you. You need something internal to motivate you. Another root of a lack of motivation is being out of position. Many of you are out of position doing something that God did not call you to do. You're doing something that you're not passionate about. You're doing a job for the paycheck instead of doing a job because you love it. Now see with me, let me give you an example. I don't have to listen to motivational videos to get psyched up, to get in front of this mic to speak to y'all. I love it. I have so much fire on the inside of me, so much truth waiting to be expressed. I cannot wait every week to get in front of this microphone. See, I know and have full revelation of who I am. I am a motivational speaker, anointed to speak. I know my legacy, which is to set the world on fire with truth. I know my outcome to impact lives daily, to get up every day and make a difference. I know my goal to speak fire, wrapped in truth, and deliver it in an artistic way through these videos to reach one billion people. I don't speak these messages from the mind, from the mouth, or even from the heart. I speak them from the spirit. I'm not doing this to get validation, likes, or views, or subscribers, or ad revenue. I'm doing this to change the world. My goal is not to be good at this. My goal is to be the greatest that's ever done it. Now, I'm not talking about a competition like me against other speakers. That is not what I'm talking about. I am talking about the standard that I have put in place inside of me. I will accept nothing but the best for myself. Nothing but greatness because greatness made me. Therefore, greatness is in me. And in everything I do, I will display the greatness of the Father that made me. When the why is greater than the obstacle, the obstacle ceases to exist. Step six. Every single day, mentally visualize your outcomes becoming your new reality. Because wherever the mind goes, the body will eventually follow. Maybe your first outcome is to overcome some kind of sickness in your body. What you have to do is close your eyes and visualize your body completely healed, completely restored, completely rejuvenated, back to a state better than ever before. Now let's move to the word. Proverbs 23, 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Your life will come directly off the assembly line of your mind. Visualize the life that you want to live every single day. Close your eyes in the morning before you get started and picture the day coming out the way you want it to be. At the end of the evening, again, visualize how you want tomorrow to be. Design, construct, build, orchestrate, compose the life that you wish to experience. The world is yours. Step seven. To making your dream a reality. This step right here is what separates the average from the greats. The average person from the highly successful. It's taking massive action. Your actions have to match the size of your dream. You gotta dream big, then let your grind do the talking. Now let's go to the word. Proverbs 10:4. A slack hand causes poverty, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. The world 
belongs to those who purchase her in sweat. And for those that know my work, blood, sweat, and tears are the only credit cards accepted here. Mark Cuban said, it's not about money or connections. It's the willingness to outwork and outlearn everyone. And I'll close out with this one from Emerson. He said, without ambition, one starts nothing. Without work, one finishes nothing. The prize will not be sent to you, you have to win it. Successful people only know one speed and that's 120. Grind City, 24-7, 365, no days off. Get out there and work and go get what is yours. Step eight to making your dream a reality. Find great mentors and spiritual partners to hold you accountable. The people you partner with, your counsel, your inner circle, the people you associate with can make or break you. Now let's go to the word. Over and over and over the word reiterates the importance of counsel and wisdom and surrounding yourself with the right people. Let us start with Proverbs 28, 26. Whoever trusts in his own mind is a fool, but he who walks in wisdom will be delivered. Proverbs 24, 6. For by wise guidance, you can wage your war. In an abundance of counselors, there is victory. If you want to go to the highest levels of success, you got to put people around you who aren't scared to tell you the truth. You don't need a bunch of yes men and yes women saying yes to everything that you come up with. You got to get some people around you who have failed hard and overcame. Who know what it's like to be in the trenches when war jumps off. Who knows how to overcome situations. You need these kind of people around you. Veterans who've been there before. If you don't have these types of people around you right now, then ask God to send them for you. He will. It's his word. He just told you to be around wise counsel. So why would he not send you wise counsel? You have not because you ask not. Ask God and he will send wisdom to you. Step nine. It's to align your mind and mouth with the vision. Every ounce of your being must become congruent with the dream, with the legacy, with the outcomes that you wish to accomplish. You can't be thinking one way and speaking another. The word says death and life are in the power of the tongue and those that love it shall eat the fruits thereof. You have to water that dream with your mouth. You know, most people don't know this, but when I first started speaking and doing these YouTube videos, you know, things didn't just jump off for me. My finances were struggling, man. I was still trying to figure out who I was, and I was just discovering this whole speaking thing. And I was so angry because my outside world was not reflecting really who I was on the inside. And I was so angry at the results that life kept giving back to me. People around me were being so negative, so in death over everything that I was trying to do. I got so angry. I turned the record on, and I started speaking who I was on this microphone. I was born a champion, raised a champion. I got champion in my bloodline. And you know the strangest thing happened? I put that video out and it went viral. And that video put me on the map. I started getting booked to speak all around the world. My book started selling. And it all started with my words. I spoke who I was. I became it. I did not feel like a champion at that time. My life did not reflect being a champion at that time. My finances did not look like I was a champion at that time. But I still spoke it anyway. And I spoke it with authority because on the inside, I knew who I was. I knew where I was supposed to be. I know what I was called to do on the inside. And I started to unleash it with my mouth. The panic attacks began to subside. And all the fear inside me died. The faith arose in me. The fire was ignited in me. And with my mind, I distorted reality until the dreams that I was dreaming bowed to me. The words you speak set outcomes in motion. See, your mouth is a creative device strategically designed to call forth the fruit of truth. If you don't like your life, you can change it by the words you use. Think like a champion, speak like a champion, walk like a champion, and the world will be yours. Step 10, the final step to making your dreams a reality is to 
keep the vision, the dream in front of you at all times. Let's start with the word. Philippians 3, 13 says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You gotta get your mind out of the past and back to the now and start looking toward the future that you wanna build. It's not what you've done or the mistakes that you made, it's what you're moving toward and what you're gonna be. That's the only thing that God is interested in. Where are you going? What is it that you want? Keep your eyes on that at all times. You gotta make your dream so big in your mind that it has no other place to go except into reality. Fill up every second of your time with success. Either reading, speaking, thinking, walking, doing, whatever it is. It's all focused on building your legacy, your outcomes, achieving your goals. You gotta be so consumed and full of these things that failure has no place to come into your life. Now hear me out. Those who don't know who they are will be vulnerable to being defined by the world. Decide on who you want to be. Name yourself before the world does. Fire. True. Music. I'm Billy Osbrooks. And I am blessed and unstoppable. And to God be the glory. I love you all. Dream big. For with God, all things are possible. I remember a while ago, before my book took off and before the speaking took off, I was out to dinner with my family and we were all gathered around the table and I was talking about what I wanted to do, my dream, my vision, what I wanted to accomplish with my life. And I could tell by the look on their face, the look in their eyes, they didn't believe me. They just didn't get it. I really wanted that validation. I wanted somebody to look at me and say, I believe in you. But that's the way it's always been in my life. See, when you dream big, it's like you speak a different language. The common man, the average person will not understand a person who is dreaming on the next level. I got so mad inside. I couldn't wait to get back home. See, I just got this big six foot dry erase board on my wall. And I had set my goals big, I thought. Until I had that conversation with my family that did not understand who they were sitting across the table from. And when I got home, I ran straight up to my office. I grabbed that eraser and I wiped my dry erase board clean. All the goals that I had dreamed before, I wiped them off. And then I started writing bigger goals, bigger dreams, bigger ambitions. See, if they're not going to understand me, then it doesn't really matter how big I dream. They're not going to understand me anyway. So if I'm going to dream, I might as well dream to the max. And let him prove his glory To prove his power To prove his magnificence through me Now somebody needs to hear this out there that's listening to me Those closest to you Those closest around you Will be the last to see the change in you First got into the music business I had been with this girl for five years But her mother couldn't stand me See, I didn't have any money at the time I wasn't working a nine to five, I was just grinding with my music, trying to make something happen. All I had was a dream. And I used to talk about this dream when I go over to my girlfriend's house. And her mother would give me this look. She said, son, you're just a dreamer. That thing you're dreaming is never gonna happen. And I don't want my daughter with somebody like you who's not gonna be anything in life. She ended up giving my girlfriend an ultimatum. She said, you either break up with him or you get out of my house. She had heard the negativity that her mother said about me so many times, she believed it. She gave up on me, and we went our separate ways. But what her mother said, that I was just a dreamer, stuck with me my whole music career. I would ask myself every single day, are you just a dreamer? Or are you a person who can grind until they execute? Somebody who can make that dream a reality, is that you? Six months after that breakup, I signed my first record deal. And three months after that, I hit the Billboard charts. That stuck with me though, what she said. Billy, you're just a dreamer and you're never gonna be nothing. I heard that voice over and over and over. So when I was outside that club promoting my music, at two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, dealing with every kind of thing you could imagine, drunks and gangs and people packing guns and, and, and that negative environment and that voice on the inside of me said, go home, it's late. I would stay that extra hour. I would stay that extra two hours grinding to prove to the world that I wasn't just dreaming. The greatness was on the inside of me. I know I'm talking to 
somebody out there right now who can relate to what I'm saying. You got dreams, you got ambitions. That nine to five job is just not enough for you. You got this grand goal of conquering the world, but no one around you believes you. Listen to me, champion. Don't get discouraged by that. You see, the common man, the average person, they can only see with their eyes. But the greats, the legends, the difference makers, the ones that have rocked and shaked this globe, they saw with their mind. The word says, where there was no vision, the people perish. Don't be scared to dream big. You see, the world belongs to the bold, and the rest are just spectators. So when you're writing out your goals, don't just set your goals to the level of your own ability. Set them to the level of the God that you serve, because with God, all my biggest challenge was managing my expectations for others. You see, I expect everyone around me to get it. Everyone around me to understand the dream that's on the inside of me. And that's just not reality. They are not the same. Now, I don't say this in an arrogant manner. They just don't have revelation yet of the God that's on the inside of them. It don't take faith to dream small. That's why so many people do it. This guy reached out to me a few months ago about doing an interview on his TV show. And it all worked out because two weeks later I was doing an event up in his city. So I get to his city, I reach out to him, text him, I'm like, hey, where you want to meet up? And uh, he said, first come out of the house and then we'll go to the station to do the interview. So he sent me his address. I put it in my GPS and, and began the journey across town. And as I pull in the neighborhood, I realize this is a rough area of town. But I'm trusting the spirit that is in me because it is guiding me to this man. And when I get over there, his house is the only house on the street that is not boarded up. Every house next to him is boarded up and abandoned. But this guy has something about him different. I pull up in the driveway and he comes out and welcomes me and introduces himself and invites me on in the house. Now, when I go in the house, all I see are goals and vision boards and dreams written down everywhere. See, this man had been in prison for 15 years, but got saved inside. And God began to pour these dreams out on him. And when he got out, God slowly began to open these doors, these unimaginable doors. First he got a radio show, then he got a TV show. God put a book in him. This guy had every reason in the world to make an excuse why he couldn't do something when he got out. He'd been gone 15 years, but he didn't make excuses. He trained big because he knew the word and said, with God, all things are possible. And he bought into that. Now this man wasn't living where he wanted to live, but he wasn't living where he was living. Do you understand what I'm saying? His mind was not in that bad area of town. His mind had already ridden the U-Haul, packed everything up and moved out of there. And everybody in that house, his new wife, his stepchildren, all of them spoke the dream. Every single one of them had their own goal sheet. Every one of them had their own vision board. Every one of them spoke success. Every one of them spoke faith. Now, I don't know how long it will take for that man to manifest what's in him, but I know he's going to. Because he has aligned with the laws of success. All you have to do is get clear on what you want in life. And you do that by starting with the way you want to feel. How do you want to feel every single day when you get up? Now with me, every day that I get up, I want to be on fire. I want to do the things that I'm passionate about. I want to write. I want to speak. I want to create. I want to get in front of people and change lives. This is what I want to do every single day of my life. Once you figure out how you want to feel, then you lay out outcomes that will produce those feelings. What outcomes, if you achieve, will make you feel the way that you want to feel? What do you want your legacy here on earth to be? When you are dead and gone, what do you want people to say about you? Most people are too lazy to do the inner homework required for greatness. The majority of the world says they want to be successful. But that's not true. What they want to do is look successful. They don't want to be successful. They don't want to do the things that it takes, the things that are required to produce that. They just want to look like that. Success is available to anybody. But not everybody is willing to pay the price that it costs to do it. Now see, here's the thing. If you want massive success, if you want to level up, if you want to go to that next level, the thing is you got to be willing to go down that road alone. Most people don't speak the language of greatness. 
And there's not a setting inside Google Translate to translate that big dream that you're talking into common language. They will not understand what it is you are saying if you're dreaming big. Now, if you got small dreams, everybody can hear you. Everybody will pat you on the back and say, sure, go ahead, buddy, you can do it. But if you dream big, I'm talking about global galactic dreams. If you want to change the world, you got to be willing to do that thing solo. Get up every single day and seek your calling. Find that thing that God has anointed you to do and get in the center of it. Get in the center of it. Turn up. Set yourself on fire and then aim for the stars. All things are possible with God. Somebody emailed me asking what I wrote on my vision board that night I went home. I wrote one billion people. Impact, motivate, inspire, so life over one billion people around this globe. I am Billy Allsbrooks, blessed and unstoppable, and I will do what I set out to do. To God be the glory. Fortunes are built on clarity and fire that has self-awareness walked out through one's passion. Today is the day. It's time to stop asking what job will pay me the most per hour and start asking yourself what has God called and anointed me to do. The time is now. Stop living a watered-down version of who God made you to be and step into your greatness. Your creator put an original, authentic, and powerful voice inside you that has been craving to express itself. Don't let bills and the cost of everyday living drown out the music in your soul. You are bigger than that. God did not create you just to pay bills and to scrape by. As believers, we all have the same purpose in life, and that's to glorify God in everything we do. But each one of us has been given different natural talents, gifts, and abilities. God did not create you to live a lukewarm life. His intention is for you to love, create, prosper, and thrive. The restless cry of destiny will not allow you to sleep any longer. Awaken to your calling. Arise, Terry. Pursue your passion with a sense of urgency. Waste no more time living a life that you were never meant to live. Unburden your spirit and embrace who you really are. Dare to be different. Your difference is your gift. See it as your strength and build on it. Don't try to conform to the mold of the masses. Celebrate your distinction. It's that distinction that qualifies you for your future. Time is your most precious commodity. Stop trading it in for mediocrity. You'll never walk in the fullness of God's blessing until you unleash the energy created from doing your passion to be successful. You must aggressively pursue your calling without any traces of fear or hesitation. And in order for you to accomplish this, you must boldly raise and establish your faith to such a level that you become immune to the fear of uncertainty. Deep down, your spirit knows what you were designed to do. And that voice of truth whispers, and blessed are those who listen. You might have missed it before, but that beautiful voice has been speaking to you since the moment you were conceived. Even in the womb, preparations will be made so that you can fulfill your assignment. Self-awareness is the beginning of success. It's knowing who God is, who He created you to be, and who He assigned you to. The only place to truly uncover this is in the presence of God. The mysteries and wisdom of heaven can only be heard in the silence. The truth is, the time that you get alone with God is the only time that you're not alone. Enter into His presence daily 
and ask him to grant you revelation and understanding of who he truly made you to be. Don't confuse a job or a profession that you've always done as your calling just because you've always done it. Let the flames of your passion set the world around you on fire. That burning, that yearning on the inside will guide and point you to your calling. When you are in your real calling, time will just seem to accelerate and evaporate and you will get lost in the moment because you enjoy what it is you're doing. When money ceases to be the driving force behind what you're doing, look around, because your calling is near. Your anointing is near. If you do not get a physical high on what you are doing, then you are not in your calling. Success is about positioning. It's putting yourself in an environment conducive to success. The object for each and every one of us is to find the center of God's calling for our life. And it's from that place and only that place that all of God's promises are made available to us. The world needs exactly what God planted inside you and only you can deliver it. Questions will take you anywhere you want to go in life. All you have to do is find the right question. So I ask you this question, this powerful life changing question. What has God called you to do? What is your divine calling? Now many of you listening to me right now, you don't know the answer to that. And that's okay for right now. But the most important thing is to begin to ask that question every single day until you figure it out. Now some of you out there know exactly what it is that God has called you to do. But the fear of failure has enslaved you to a life of emptiness. You've traded your freedom for certainty. You've traded your greatness in for a steady Friday paycheck. Every day you get up and go do a job that smothers you with average. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings by what I'm saying. But I gotta give it to you raw and uncut. Because that's the only way you're gonna get from where you are now to the center of God's plan for your life. So I ask you again, what has God called you to do? What is your divine calling? Leave the money and financial compensation out of the equation and just ask the question, what has God called me to do? Don't say, well, how am I gonna pay my bills? That's not the question right now. The question right now is, what has God called you to do? Greatness derives out of clarity. You gotta know what you were put here on earth to do. The best way to figure this out is to follow the smoke. And what I mean by that is your fire, your passion, the things that you're consumed by will point you straight to it. If the flame is absent, if the energy is not radiating when you do it, if there's no craving to prolong the natural high from being in the moment, from doing it, then it's not your calling. Keep searching. The secret to success is building your life around the things that you love. Because greatness is impossible to attain without a burning desire to achieve it. The intoxication created from the enthusiasm of functioning inside the center of your calling gives you an edge a superior advantage that will allow you to dominate your space. The best way to glorify God is to stay in your lane and do your calling. When you marry your passion to singleness of purpose, it produces the environment needed for greatness. And for you to thrive, you must do the things that make you feel alive. Now listen to me. Everything that you want in life can be found behind the door that says passion on it. It's these obsessions that will allow you to possess the promises of God. To achieve greatness, you must align with something that allows you to fully harness the power created from doing your passion. And the only way to find your own voice is to do what you love. The day of awakening, the day you discover your life's calling will be the turning point in your life. God has anointed you with a set of unique talents for a reason. His calling for you is directly tied to you using your gifts. Hear me out, because this is important. Functioning outside of his calling gives birth to disillusionment, frustration, and spiritual emptiness. And these fruits from misalignment 
produce sickness, disease, financial struggles, bitterness, resentment, anger, extramarital affairs, broken marriages, and destroys families. We don't realize a lot of times where all these problems are coming from. See, the whole world is out of position. Very few people in the world are doing what they were called to do. And if you're out of position, all you're gonna get is strife, stress, and chaos. You wonder why it seems like the whole world is against you? It's because you're out of position. You're not where you're supposed to be. You're not doing what you were called to do. Inside the calling is the anointing. And it is this anointing that makes one unstoppable. What is your calling? What is it that God has designed you to do? Stop running from who God made you to be and step into your calling. Champions live every day in the boldness of being themselves. You need not be subject to the way of the masses, the beliefs of the status quo, or the deficiencies of today's educational system. Pursue yourself. Chase your authenticity. Get up every morning, put on your shoes, and chase after your destiny. I dare you to discover the real you. I dare you to show the world who you really are. Stop chasing other people's dreams. Live the dream that God gave you in the womb. I want to really land this part right here. Just because you admire somebody else's calling does not mean that you were called and anointed to do it. I'm going to say this one more time because it's so important that you understand this. It's so important that you get this. Just because you admire somebody else's calling does not mean that you were called and anointed to do it. You have your own calling. You have your own assignment. Stay in your lane and build around the strengths that God gave you. When you do that, you will become magnetic, attracting opportunities that will put you in position to be successful. Follow the whisper. God's spirit will guide you to your destiny. There's nothing more beautiful, more seductive, more attractive than a person comfortable in their own skin. The battleground is over self and you are under siege. Don't join the army of cones. The paycheck addicts who are too reliant on hourly wages to ever pursue their dreams. No one can ever be a better version of you than you. Dream your own dream. Get out of that comfort zone. Stop living in a box. Refuse to accept the limitations of the unbelievers. Have faith in the one who can make all things possible. Step into your calling. And once you get there, then you can find creative ways to package the value produced while you're doing it. It's much easier to see the financial opportunities in the center of the calling than it is on the outside. See, you can't see how you're going to make money doing your thing because you're not in your thing. Let's be real. You've been struggling most of your life anyway doing that hourly job that you can't stand anyway. So what do you have to lose? Maybe right now you have yourself in a bind. And financially, you can't step full time into your car. So here's what you gotta do. You gotta spend every second outside of your job thinking, plotting, and planning to get into your calling. You do whatever it takes to get there. The person who commits themselves to enter into this definiteness of purpose will find that God will shake heaven and earth to open the doors needed for them to do it. I close out in prayer. Father God, I pray that every single person who hears this message finds the center of your calling for their life. May your plans and promises, each and every one of them, be fulfilled in their life. May they be not lost, but have eternal life in you. May no weapon formed against them prosper. May you give them complete revelation and understanding of who you made them to be. And may all their needs be met according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I'm Billy Alls Brooks, blessed and unstoppable. To God be the glory. Blessed and unstoppable. Success starts with putting the right things into your mind. And my new book, Blessed and Unstoppable, was strategically designed to align your mind with the laws of success. 
This curriculum will teach you the inner mechanics required to go from average to phenomenal. From living a life with limits to being blessed and unstoppable. As you follow this guide step by step, amazing breakthroughs will happen. New doors of opportunity will open and favor will begin to chase you down. Blessed and Unstoppable is a 31 day devotional on the laws of success. This book will instigate the thought process and actions required to transform your life. Each day has a Bible verse, a teaching on that day's principle, a positive affirmation, a prayer for the day, self-assessment questions, success quotes, action steps, and a powerful inspirational message. Regardless of what field you're in, Blessed and Unstoppable is your blueprint for success. Get your copy at blessedandunstoppable.com. Also available on Amazon. The struggle is real, but you know you were meant for more. That dream that's on the inside of you just won't shut up. Because you know you were meant for more. You've always been different. They never understood you. They've always doubted you. Because you're different. But you know something that they don't know. You know to be successful you cannot follow the masses You gotta be different And you are bold enough to be you You've always been different Success ain't for everybody B7U clothing Wear your identity